Tonight, the battle for Mariupol has entered a new stage with Russia's Vladimir Putin claiming victory, even as he ordered his troops not to take the risk of storming an isolated steel plant. Thousands of troops and innocent civilians remain trapped inside a steel plant in the city surrounded by Russian forces. Putin ordered his troops to seal off the plant to try and starve the Ukrainians. Meanwhile, west of Mariupol, new satellite images show more than 200 mass graves, with what a Ukraine official estimates are three to 9,000 bodies. President Biden announcing new funding for Ukraine today with $800 million worth of aid and military weapons. That includes 72 howitzers, ammunition, and so called ghost drones. Those are newly designed for Ukraine to take out high value targets. The Pentagon said these will effectively create five new Ukrainian artillery battalions. The president paraphrased Teddy Roosevelt in a message to Russia saying, sometimes we will speak softly and carry a large javelin because we're sending a lot of those. We have a lot to get to tonight, starting with CBS's Charlie Daggett from Eastern Ukraine. Good evening, Charlie. Good evening to you, Nora. In his late night address moments ago, President Zelensky said he was grateful to the United States for the new package, the support and defense tools for his military. And considering the circumstances, they can't get here quickly enough. After pummeling Mariupol for weeks and resistance still holding out, President Putin ordered forces don't storm the steel plant, but block it off so tightly not even a fly can escape. With smoke rising above the complex, about a thousand civilians remain trapped in the darkened maze of tunnels below it. A young mother says they're running out of food and water and hope. Ukrainian troops are in desperate need of the military support pledged by President Biden today. Putin has failed to achieve his grand ambitions on the battlefield. His new ambition, capturing parts of eastern Ukraine across a 300-mile front line, including Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Kharkiv has been the target of constant Russian bombardment since this conflict began. And while we've been here, we've heard explosions throughout the day. The damage is everywhere. That is the administration building. The target of one of the first audacious rocket attacks in the early days of the war. Exhausted residents in the firing line of Putin's aim to capture the city. Sofia has taken shelter in a subway train since the war began. Two months. Two months. The Russians want to take Kharkiv over. If it happens, it will be terrible, she said. We were born here. Everything was good. We have little left of our lives. On the platform, Pavel Fedoshenko hands out pizzas to excited children and their weary parents. Pizza orders placed by complete strangers, donations from all over the world. People who left Kharkiv want to feed those left behind, he said, foreigners who want to treat emergency crews and paramedics. Word of mouth spread quickly, and now his daddy's pizza has a PayPal account for donations and hundreds of happy customers. How does that make you feel? Joyful, he said, bringing a little slice of happiness here, seeing kids laugh, to bring a taste of normal life, it feels fantastic. Now, we saw bomb damage buildings all over Kharkiv today. The streets were virtually deserted. Yet, despite nearly two months of near constant bombardment, that city remains under Ukrainian control, at least for now. Nora. Charlie Daggett, thank you.